Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Wow, welcome back to my live stream. It is Tuesday. The sun is gone. So uh, yeah, it's this this way. It's, it's kind of it's kind of dark here today, and then uh, I have my key light on. But then even that is, you know, like uh, it's it's on full blast at the moment. And uh, I don't know. It just it just feels a little bit darker than usual, right? And uh, but hopefully, hopefully we're gonna have some fun today. And uh, trying to keep it short again today. I'm not trying to overdo it unless you guys starting to join me towards the end of the stream like yesterday and uh, we shall see what's gonna happen but anyway welcome back and uh, yeah I'm happy to be back because I had a week off last week uh, doing my uh, projects for Olympus uh, so I spent a few days really working hard uh, didn't sleep at all almost and I had three hours sleep for two days and uh, but I managed to film whatever I need to film so this week I still have to process uh, all those uh, videos and uh, uh, you know edit everything and hopefully I'll get it all signed off in the next couple of weeks or so. So uh, there's still got a lot of work to do even though filming is done last week so I still be uh, need to do all the post production side of it. So uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's never easy, you know, being professional. You're not it's just like photography, you know, you're just not just taking a photo, you have to process them afterward as well. Even though uh, in in terms of photography, it's slightly different to filmmaking because um, uh, photography is is that effort, you know, trying to get to that place, and then you 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 have to make sure you time it right and do everything and uh, capture that shot. Uh, the post production side of you know editing uh, in in photo is is not as trenchous compared to the beginning part of photography, but in in video term, it's slightly different. You know, like uh, it's, it's almost. I don't know. I don't know. I think every part, uh, uh, every stages in photography, I've been filmmaking is actually very difficult. You know, all the way from planning. Good morning, Trevor. Good morning. Good to see you here. And uh, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Oh, you're getting some work done. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so filmmaking is slightly different because uh, you have uh, uh, you have to plan. Uh, 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 you know your your the entire video. You have to make sure all the all the storyboards is correct. You know the the mood board is there. Uh, I mean, photography has that as well. You know, but then everything it seems to be like ten times longer. You know, like then you have to film. You just don't film just like one angle at the moment. You have to film multiple things, multiple angles. B rolls and then uh, all kinds of stuff that adds to the whole entire thing. And after that, you got like like ten thousand clips here, and you have to edit them back together and make them all all cohesive. You know, like make them make sense. You know, it's as a production as a product. You know, at the end of the day, so it's it's a lot of work going on. You know, for for filmmaking and videography. Uh, I mean, I, I can guess why. You know, this this why like filmmakers or videos takes a lot longer and also charge up the charge people way more than photography because of the effort you have to put into it. So yeah, it, it's, it's general, it's, it's fine. So uh, this is what I've been going through in the last couple of years and trying to work my game up in terms of filmmaking. So it's, 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 it's fun, I love it. I mean, uh, it, it's something that I really enjoy doing. It's just that it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time. And uh, so, okay, anyway, so today's, Yes, today's uh, live stream is, uh, you know, look, look at see, I've already got the uh, today's topic thing, you know, like a general update and then the topic, right? Should you clean your equipment? <laughs> I'm going to come into it in a minute. Good morning, Alvin. Good morning. Um, uh, so general update, nothing going apart from that. I just want to uh, just want to tell you that the sun is completely gone now. It's windy, it's red, it's actually raining outside. Haven't seen heavy rain for, well, it's not quite heavy, but uh, it's this sort of rain. Haven't seen it for a couple of weeks now. So uh, it's good to have a little bit of a... Uh, 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 moistures in the air. It, it helps to kill the uh, the pollens and and also like because I have I suffer hay fever, you know, really really badly. I mean, I have to take like lots and lots of medication every year just to suppress my uh, hay fever symptom, like itchy nose, watery eyes, and you know, you name it. I have everything. You know, it's really bad to a point that you know I usually have red eyes and and like like bloody nose you know i'm not joking because i blow my nose so much or sneeze so much that it actually blood came out and uh, oh it's just disgusting i don't want to i don't want to scare you guys good morning david and uh anyway so so it's good to have some rain so you know just kind of kill off some of the pollens in the air and uh, at least today i'm not suffering as bad yes yesterday it was actually quite bad and i had to take uh tablets and uh, keep uh, i kept blowing my nose and yeah it wasn't a nice feeling at all and it also drains you a little bit as well you know i don't know if you'll have the same experience but anyway we're in the house we is is uh, nope everything is remain the same you know and we didn't go out and still locked down 
nothing to update but we are healthy we're happy uh hopefully you guys are the same as well and we should we should be seeing the end of the tunnel very soon right you know um, the, in london at least you know this is what i've been reading on the news so far you know we may have some sort of exit strategy in the next couple of weeks hopefully we will be able to go back out once again um, but it won't be normal normal that's what they say anyway because uh, the social distancing will still remain in place so we still can't gather together. So I can't organize any photo walks, unfortunately. Damn it. You know, I thought as soon as I go out, I'm going to organize some photo walks. So hopefully, hopefully some of you guys will join me in London and do something. But like, it looks like it may not be possible until probably later in the year when social distancing is relaxed further. And then I'll be able to do something. But in the meantime, so... I guess live stream is the only way that we can communicate with each other and also through my YouTube live. Uh, so this is the, the only channel I can talk to you guys, unfortunately. But I'm good to see you guys. Burana, good afternoon. And uh, so it's, it's, it's fun to you know see you guys back here and uh, talk to you guys, engage with you, especially in YouTube as well. Uh, talking about YouTube, before I head on to my today's topic, uh, is that I... I don't, I'm not entirely sure because uh, it's, it's a fun thing to talk about because uh, uh, I want to hear from you guys. Uh, what's your worst moment in photography? Yeah, and uh, not so much about uh, the worst photos. I'm actually it's about worst equipment. Whatever happens, yeah, accidents, um, booking, planning. Uh, yeah, even photo. Yeah, you mess up your photos. Uh, it, it was supposed to be a really great photo. Tell me all your experience about that. You know, I would like to hear about it, and I want to share my experience with you so obviously i've been i've been holding the camera professionally for over 10 years i've been using cameras for over 20 years so it's it, i mean i have a lot of history behind me and then uh, and of course things happened and then uh, uh, a lot of stories i can share with you guys so that should be quite fun um <laughs> right okay david actually got some questions already so let's get right into it now so remember Share some of your horror story with your photography or camera stories uh, uh, with me. And then uh, tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m., uh, YouTube Live, I'm going to talk about this experience and uh, let, let's get some fun out of it. And then uh, so it should be quite fun. All right. Anyway, let's get to the, today's topic. Should you clean your equipment? Well, in short, yes, it's a bit like cleaning your cars. And then uh, you really want to keep your camera gear in tip-top condition, you know, like really nice condition. And um, not to an extent that, you know, into a, a collectible kind of condition. Now, I know some people do, you know, I used to do that. But when you're working, you know, your camera's gonna get banged up, gonna get scratches and stuff like that. But you should still keep it as clean as possible. There are many reasons for it. You know, you want to make sure your camera still works, you know, all the switches and buttons and, and also like uh, uh, your lenses, the focusing rings, and you know, all the, the, the dials, the zooms and everything in good working condition because if you don't clean it over time it will get a lot of like really horrible stuff get stuck inside the gaps and then and the things get stiffened up and so it's not very very good at all so uh, uh i would recommend people to clean the camera whenever they have a chance um for me you know because i use my camera a lot so i tend to keep them clean every well clean them every week uh you know externally like making sure all the uh, all the joints and everything's are all clean so nothing got trapped inside and uh, especially especially after a, a raining, you know, like if I go out for, like, let's say if it's raining today, if I go out for a shoot, if the camera got all wet, uh, I would wipe it down, you know, dry them properly, and then uh, use, the, use a rocket blower, which is a fantastic, like, uh, thing to have, you know, to blow out all the uh, uh, water, the trap in the gap, so I will blow them all out, clean them again, and uh, and that's it, you know, just making sure everything's nice and clean, and you it preferably, you know, just uh, put it in a slightly warmer place just to dry them up further. It's just, uh, that's, that's kind of my practice anyway. So I, I see some of you, David got a question here, and how often do I clean my sensor? Well, um, funny enough, this is something that um, I would like to share with you guys. Yes, very good question, David. When I was a Canon guy and, uh, and Leica, you know, I used to clean the sensor very, very often because I... I change my lenses a lot. You know, I'm not one of those guys who use only one lenses. Uh, one lens, I, mean, I always keep, ch keep changing different lenses. Uh, uh, so I always see things get stuck in my sensor, especially when you shoot uh, stop down the center uh, at the aperture. You will see the little dots on the on the on the actual picture itself. I hate correct them, correcting them in post, and they're really annoying. So what I would do is uh, 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 I used to use wet and dry cleaning method. Dry cleaning, of course, you know, easy, just a blower. Uh, don't 
ever use one of those uh, uh, compression air, you know, now this is another tip I want to give you guys, because uh, when I, I remember when I first got my um, very, very first digital DSLR, the Canon 5D, I used to use the uh, one of these uh, uh, compression air that you clean the uh, the computer. <laughs> I thought that's a cool blast of air, yeah. That would get rid of all the dust, yeah. <laughs> Just shove it right into the sensor, blast it out, and it the sensor was covered with a layer of this. Uh, 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 I don't know what it is in the compressed air. You know, it's, it's horrible. I couldn't get rid of it, so I had to send the camera. It was it was like literally three weeks old. The camera, I had to send it to uh, uh, fixation in, in London to to have the uh, sensor properly cleaned by professional. Um, so ever since then, I've never ever used any compressed air anymore. Um, so I, I looked up online, you know, because at the time it's still very new. This whole sensor cleaning thing. Uh, of course, professional services would, would offer uh, uh, a cleaning, but an, um, uh, as a home user, DIY thing, you know, is there there were limited options you can you can purchase. But of course, nowadays you can get loads and loads of different things you can clean your sensors, uh, like sensor scopes and and these swipes and things like that. Then eventually, I did get the swipe and I just clean myself. It's very effective, very okay to do it. Uh, but you still can't get rid of this very sticky stuff that really stuck in the sensor. You you know, if you still if you get that after. Uh, uh, swiping it, you still need to get it professionally clean. Um, my Leica has that as well. I clean my I clean my Leica sensor myself, and uh, I first would use the blower just to blow all the, any loose dust on the sensor. Then I would just uh, use an, a wet application just to get rid of the rest of it, uh, unless it's really sticky. Then I may have to send it off, but. Uh, I think sensor technology also improved over time as well. Now they have uh, different coatings, so it's less sticky in a way. It's just easier to maintain. Uh, but of course, and the latest Olympus cameras and all the kind of like a mirrorless camera in the last two to three years, they all have some sort of self-cleaning mechanism uh, by means of using vibrations to shake off all the dust and moisture. Uh, especially in the latest uh, EM1 uh, X. Uh, EM5 Mark III and EM1 Mark III, they all have this uh, supersonic filter, which is really, really, really cool. Um, uh, in fact, you know, like even the Mark II that I, um, uh, I was using for the last four years had no problem about dust actually sticking onto the sensor. So I never needed to clean them. Um, and that's a fact. I mean, all my Olympus camera, I never clean the sensor and I haven't seen dust sticking on it uh, at all. And uh, I'm, I'm not joking, when I mean, you use a lot of, uh, 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 you know, as you know now, I, I use my E1 Mark II like, almost exclusively for the last four years, uh, shot everything with it, and now I'm using the E1 X and the E1 Mark III. Uh, I change lenses like everywhere, when, even when it's raining, so like, uh, no problem. But um, as a tip to using this supersonic filter is, you know, like the only activates whenever you switch on the camera. So like uh, what I would do if you, about changing lenses uh, in a very, horrible conditions, you know, best make sure you switch off the camera, you know, unlock your lens and put the new lens on and switch it back on because that's when you shake off everything before you start shooting. And uh, I know it's slightly slower because you have to switch it back on, but uh, to be honest, the start time of all the Olympus cameras nowadays is quite quite, uh, quite quick, so like, you don't have to, uh, you're not going to miss much to be honest. And uh, okay, so does that, that's, and uh, in terms of answering your question, no, I wouldn't say very often. I would probably say never in the Olympus cameras. But in my Canon days and the Leica days, I used to clean it every two to three weeks, depending how dirty it is, because you could you will see it in the picture. As soon as I see it, I'll open up and just clean it. And uh, in the Leica camera before, it has what they call the uh, dust detection. So basically, you will stop down the lens uh, to f8 or f11. You shoot a, a, a photo in a blank wall, and then basically it, it, the the program will just trying to dictate whether there's any black, black dot on the uh, on the picture frame and tell you exactly where the dust are, and you're just trying to clean it yourself. So uh, it's it's kind of cool, though. I think it's a good idea. But unfortunately, all the all the M10s uh, uh, M uh, M cameras still don't have this sensor shaking thing, you know, the vibration to get rid of the dusts. So okay, let's see if uh, any other things that you have here. <laughs> Try walk outside with protective Spider-Man suit. Uh, <laughs> well, did you see that post that I was posting on Facebook uh, yesterday? And I have this big, massive visor thing. You can you can order on on Indiegogo now. And so that's uh, one of this crowdfunding campaign. Maybe maybe we all gonna have to wear one of those uh, 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 in 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 uh, in the next few months. <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. I see. Uh, right. How do I dry my gear? Uh, well, there are two things I carry with me, and the one is, of course, a, uh, I will use a very nice quality uh, lens cloth. 
Uh, I have multiple, and this one was just a, a gift. I remember I got it from uh, uh, the photography show, but it's a Zeiss. Uh, it basically is microfiber uh, lens cloth. It was really good. So this will clean all the optics uh, in uh, the front elements and also the uh, the viewfinder. So I use this with, to clean that. And in terms of body, I would just use a normal uh, microfiber cloth and just to wipe wipe around because it's quite good soaking up moisture. So I use that to wipe everything. Um, like I mentioned, uh, if you do carry a rocket blow, a smaller version, so use it to blow any gaps as well if you if you are desperate to to clean it all off. Uh, but usually. In the field, uh, I less worry about it. You know, it doesn't matter when it's get wet, because uh, I'm using it anyway. But I'm more worried about the front element to have droplets in front of the lens, so that you would just ruin the picture. So I will use the uh, the lens lens cloth and to just wipe it all down. But remember to clean the lens cloth as well. You know, like you don't keep using it because over time. It was. It would get a little bit oily, you know, like, and you were just basically smudging the oil around the lens, so it's not very good. So uh, you use warm soap, uh, soapy water to clean this, or just shove it into a washing machine with your clothes, and uh, it will come up nice and clean. So it, yeah, it's good. But yeah, don't. Add, another thing, do not add a uh, softener to, when you're washing the uh, microfiber lens cloth because uh, it will also add a little bit of chemical to it that makes it. Yeah, just not very clean afterward. Uh, it's okay for clothing, you know, it just makes the fiber softer. But for micro cleaning cloth, you don't, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, just clean water and soaps, and, and that uh, that's perfectly fine. So uh, that's how I usually clean my stuff, and I hate smudges and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's it just really horrible. And how about condensation as well? You know, sometimes when you go to, uh, let's say, a hot country, when you go uh, from an air conditioned. Uh, place and to outside when it's really hot and humid and you'll find this the lens will just steamed up Completely and you have to climatize the whole equipment before you can use it uh, I, I found that in Olympus the, the especially the weather seal bodies are very good at keeping everything inside Okay, but the lenses outside is still steamed up and you have to wait for about like 10 minutes before you can start shooting something um, You can keep wiping it, but because the because the uh, lens element is still cold from the from the indoor uh, uh, air conditioning, and then when you step outside, you know you, you, you just have to wait until the front element is warmed up so <laughs> at the same temperature as the outside temperature, and then that's when you getting uh, that's when you get rid of all this uh, condensation and moisture in front of the uh, the lens itself, so we'll be able to take sharp pictures. Okay, uh, so it's it's good. So I'm not sure about how often you clean your camera, and uh, not only camera, I also another thing I want you to clean as well is your camera bag. Well, tell me how often do you clean your camera bags? Uh, uh, probably not many. Um, I, I must say, I'm, I don't clean my camera bag often enough, but I think we should. Uh, because as soon as you open your camera bag, I bet yeah, you look into the bottom of the camera bag, you'll find lots and lots of dust or some bits in it. You know, those are not very good if you clean your camera and put it straight into the back and when the back is actually like dirty. So like you're not really doing much to your camera and protecting your camera, especially uh, for me, especially because I don't use lens cap. This is another thing a lot of people asking asking me a lot. Why don't you use filter? Why don't you use lens cap? And uh, it, it just me, okay, filters, I don't see the needs of it uh, uh, because it, 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 it's just another thing. Um, on front of the lens. I know it protects the front element, but I, I don't know, I just lay, lazy, call me lazy. And you have to buy lots of them because I have lots of lenses. I just hate buy loads of clear filters or UV filters. I don't see the point of having a protective filters. And, uh, but in that sense, maybe it's, it's worthwhile because uh, especially you know, I shoved my camera with the lens in the camera bag without any, without lens hood or filter. So the front element could potentially be scratched by whatever dust things in the bottom of the camera bag. Um, so far, touch wheel, I haven't ex really experienced it, but that's the point I'm trying to make. The camera bag does get dirty over time, uh, especially if you use it a lot. Uh, I have several uh, camera bags, so I kind of swap from time to time, so it doesn't get that dirty. Uh, but I remember in the old days, I had only one camera bag, and that bag would get super dirty, and I have to clean it and use vacuum, uh, use one of these sticky things that you, you, you know, to stick up all the dust inside, so it's not very good at all. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, you watched that, Burana. I, 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 oh, wow, you remember that. Yes, I, I actually did that with the 300mm uh, lens that I was reviewing at a time uh, in London Zoo. Uh, I, yeah, 
I was stepping up from the outside to the inside when it's uh, inside the, because it's uh, one of these tropical greenhouse. So I went in there and the lens just fogged up completely. It was really wet and I, throughout the entire durations in there, you know, because because we're filming, so like we weren't really. Uh, waiting for it to climatize, so it, <laughs> I keep wiping the lens trying to get some shots, but it, it was really uh, uh, steamed up. It, I couldn't really see much, and I keep wiping it, keep taking photos, keep wiping it, and yeah, it did, it did really work. <laughs> oh, glad you remember that. Wow, that that's really really cool. Uh, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't take photo at all. That 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 is very true. I I, I really remember that. But anyway, so that, that's kind of my experience about cleaning um, equipment and also bags. In terms of external, um, uh, uh, externally, because it's more like the cosmetic side of it. I already mentioned that the camera, I will clean it because I don't want any dust or any guns that got stuck in, be, uh, in between the gaps and buttons and dials and things like that just to stop it seized up uh, over time because it will uh, if you use it a lot in very dirty environments. Um, so I'll try to clean those and, and the Olympus camera, especially the Mark 1, uh, EM1 Mark 3, the EM1 X, uh, you know, you can actually put it under the tap and use a little uh, 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 hair uh, not hairbrush, toothbrush, yes, toothbrush. You can actually brush it and clean it and uh, very effective. I've done it multiple times. Yeah, just making sure that your, uh, uh, you have the lens cap on, I mean the, the body cap on, and you, you can just run it through water, not directly having heavy water blasting into it, but just normal, general, slow uh, running water will be able to clean the camera quite nicely. And, uh, and I've done it. <laughs> and, uh, it's just because it's so well sealed up, the, the whole camera, and it's, it's perfectly fine to get rid of any dirt in the, in the gaps and things like that, especially uh, like if you go out for very sandy stuff, uh, environments or very dusty places, uh, yeah, it would do the job very nicely. Uh, in terms of bag-wise, uh, I don't usually clean the outside, and uh, I mean, I would dust it a little bit, in my, I might use a vacuum or something just to vac suck up the loose dust, but I, I tend to just leave it, you know, it's just part of the charm, right? Especially I use Billingham's, and then, and, you know, it's nice to have an aging bag than a always pristine look bag, and it's just kind of me anyway. And I know people do wash them, and I've seen people pushing, pu uh, putting the Billingham bags in washing machine <laughs> on YouTube, so, which is a bit weird, And because uh, you're not supposed to do that, because especially you've got leather uh, trims around the camera bag, you know, you're putting washing machines, it's not going to damage all the leathers. Uh, so if you do want to wash it, I think uh, Billingham's do recommend you to wash it with just hand wash with soapy water, and then again, just light brush and things like that. You're not supposed to use a heavy force to trying to clean it to like brand new, you know, you're not going to get brand new back after it's been used and marked, you know, over time. And it's going to be very difficult. You might as well let it grow old gracefully with your experience. And like you can tell people that, you know, I've been having that bag, I've been carrying it for like 15, 20 years. You know, that's, they should be proud of that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's cool. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you, Brana. And uh, yeah, well, we did we did do a lot of Olympus um, uh, gear reviews. I think over the last three and a half, four years now. Uh, I mean, I think we we counted the other day how many videos we made. I think we made over 150 videos. So it's it's quite a lot of videos over the last four years. Uh, that we we made a lot of progress, of course. Uh, this year's. You know, unfortunately, you know, we were going to propel to the next level. We were hoping to get something that like, really nice, uh, but you know, we kind of stopped for six weeks. You know, and uh, it is difficult. Is nothing going on, and uh, you know. But I'm happy. I'm happy that you know we're still around. Everybody's still happy and healthy, and that's that's the most important thing. Uh, so, would you say just body cap, Brian? Are you talking about the uh, when I'm cleaning the camera? Yeah, I just put the body cap in, uh, on. When you wash, and uh, if you want to rinse the camera, I just want to show you. Remember. Not to, uh, if you do want to uh, wash with the camera cap. Oh, where's my cap gone? Uh, I can't find any caps. I, sh I should have some caps somewhere. Oh, uh, never mind. But uh, if you want to just wash it, tilt your camera like this or slightly at a 45 degree angle tilting down so the water is not directly going into the, the actual uh, uh, a lens mount itself, you know, just trying to avoid a little bit of water, uh, water dust getting, but it shouldn't matter too much because the, especially what uh, EM1 Mark III and EM1 X are very, very built for that sort of thing. Um, but I do just pour water in and just, you know, brush it and, you know, 
Use a, one of these uh, lens pens as well, which is really good. to just like just brush it around. You know, it, it, it will do the job very, very nicely. And mind you, all the pro lenses on the, uh, on the Olympus camera, uh, like the 25, 17, and 45 1.2 Pro, the back is also sealed as well. So like, even though that's a lens element, of course, you need to see the lens too, so light can get through, but it's sealed. So like moisture can't get through from the back or the front. So that is how good and how well built these lenses are. So I really do like that, uh, that feature. So like, you know, like even when I'm in a dusty environment, I, you know, I, I just change lenses. I don't really matter. Uh, just, yeah, as soon as I bang it on and just continue shooting. And uh, that's, that's, that's okay. But of course, you don't want to change uh, your lens when it's raining doing like this, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are you are asking for trouble, even though this weather well is but you're not really going to ask the rain directly dropping into the center. Does that? <laughs> that's not the way to do. You're still trying to be careful. You know, trying to tilt down the camera when you change lenses, uh, or at least just slightly forty-five degrees, so like you're not getting the rain completely going straight into the center or the connections. Uh, that will probably not very very good. Even though it's weather sealed, but if water does get into the connections of the between the lens and the uh, the lens mount. It will make the connection a little bit weird until it's dried up. So uh, it won't damage it, but uh, you just have to make sure that there's no moisture between the connections because uh, uh, it will, uh, I wouldn't say short circuit, but it will just make the connections a little bit weird. You know, sometimes you may find that your, your aperture is not working, but it's not. It's actually just because there's moisture in between connections. All you need to do is use a, a microfiber cloth just to wipe it down a little bit and, and then it'll be fine once again. So no problem with that. Okay. So that's awesome and uh, great stuff. So that's all about cleaning stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, it's something that I believe that now we have time, you know, if you've got multiple cameras at home, you know, just clean everything, you know, just um, get them into really nice conditions again. Don't try not to use chemical. Uh, uh, that's not the way to do, you know, like don't use any uh, uh, waxing agents and things. They thought, you know, oh, let's give, let's give the, the camera polish. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people do, and uh, don't do that. Don't use WD-40 either, you know, that will kill your camera. Um, so just try not to use any chemical. Water is the best. If you really want, if you have a wetter seal body, use a very mild soapy water to clean it. And, uh, and after that, use another uh, clean wet cloth just to wipe it around. Uh, preferably use microfiber cloth and the case is lint free so there's no more other bits that you can get stuck again um, so to clean up your camera and that's 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 all and then after you after you wash them or clean them put them on the side let it completely dry it up uh, dry it off, uh, dry off and then you can put it back to your camera bag or cases uh, just to store them back uh, yeah now you've got time to clean all your lenses and uh, all your camera gears so i'm like, not just about just not talk about lenses and cameras and bags. I'm talking about all the other accessories, so like flashes, speed lights, uh, cable even. Because cable, you know, I'm telling you, you know, like cable, because I use it a lot as well. You know, cables are the connections and stuff like that. These can get dirty as well. Just just trying to wipe down everything, so making sure everything will be back to the like new condition where you can make sure that it functions properly, get a good connections between the camera and your accessories or other equipment, then that will be very, very good. Uh, good morning, Maiton. Wow, cool. So let's see what you have here. I was cooking. Oil. <laughs> I always have cooking oil splash onto lens many times. <laughs> well, of course, it's not not a pro not a problem. And uh, uh, it, yeah, cooking oil. What are you filming? <laughs> what are you taking pictures of? Uh, if in that case, I mean, like like I mentioned, soapy water would does would, would do the job wonder because they the. the the lens does have very good coating these days, which is supposed to be uh, oil, uh, water uh, resistant, um, which means that you know you, you, you can wipe it off, but you, you don't want to smudge it because uh, especially oil in, the, in front of the lens, if you try to clean it, you know it, it will create a very like thin layer of oil that's much uh, like around the entire front element. So like uh, I was still using soapy water trying to get rid of all the oil elements and then uh, just use some uh, lens uh, cleaning solutions or better still, uh, where is it? Uh, I have I have quite a few of them lying around earlier and uh, don't remember that I, I previously spoke about my uh, cleaning um, uh, disposable cleaning cloth thing that I clean my glasses. You should get some of those. Let me, let me just get some. One second.
right? Okay. Hooray. Okay. So these stuff, you should get these. These are my lightsaber, right? Okay. Can you see this? This is the uh, the Zeiss lens cloth or lens wipe, not lens cloth, lens wipe. Uh, they are not expensive at all if you buy from Amazon. And I can put the link in the description after this, you can check it out. Uh, they, they are really, really amazingly good. And uh, I use them to clean anything, uh, you know, from my actual glasses that I'm wearing now and to my phone screen, <laughs> to uh, EVF the uh, and also the lens elements. It, it just works the wonder and it's really good. And uh, I, I've used a lot of different wipes before, but these are really, really good. Uh, they, they come, the one that I bought, I buy in big box and then because they're the cheapest and, and seriously, they are really good. Uh, I, I now have a subscription of them in, in Amazon. So every nine months they deliver a box for me and because it, it will last for quite a while, even if you use daily. Uh, so they are really good. Uh, I, do, I do use it a lot for cleaning, uh, just general stuff because it will get rid of the oil. Uh, so that's very good. Uh, depending on how oily it is, of course, and if you like actually got splashes of oil in front of the lens, you may have to use a few. Uh, but what I would still do if you've got a lot of oil, I'm, I'm talking about like dripping oil, <laughs> still using soapy water to get rid of all the excess. And then, and then you're trying to apply one of these wipes just to, you know, because it can take alcohol as well, because it's very good. And they just kind of wipe it around, clean it all off. And finally, you can buff it off with a proper uh, microfiber lens cloth that will get your lens back to top conditions and you can get this nice coating that purple reflection from the front of the lens again so that is really good and uh, yeah <laughs> wow really i would like to see that okay that's cool you do cooking video for youtube awesome i will definitely check you out mate definitely check you out uh yeah so it's it's really really fun and uh, uh to to shoot something different right you know and uh, I'm, i've been trying a few things lately and uh, because i'm stuck at home now and then i think um it's great to try something different with your camera especially uh you've got everything you're not going out you must still use it at home and see what sort of thing you can capture right i've been using this a lot as well lately i mean you guys got one of these and uh, uh you know like a gopro or the osmo action because it's tiny you can you can put it in a lot of like weird places. Use an imagination. I'm not trying to scare you, but that uh, uh, you uh, because it's like waterproof, well, kind of waterproof, and and, uh, and uh, you you can make use of it in a lot of different scenarios, you know. And uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 fun like making videos and uh, uh, in that way because you you can now use like a lot of different tiny little gadgets so you can get something really awesome uh, um, for your content uh, but anyway so it's, it's good and uh, i really enjoyed today's uh, actually uh, quite a few of you guys uh, participated that's really cool so tomorrow i'm not entirely sure what i'm gonna do tomorrow uh, if you guys have any uh, uh, suggestions about what we should talk about tomorrow then leave some comment down below and i'll be happy to see them and uh, then and then we can talk about things tomorrow so i guess we shall end today's uh stream is half an hour very on time that's very good i'm happy to be back actually i'm feeling energetic very good because i i filmed my project last week for olympus and uh, now i am able to find it edit. there's still bits of elements i need to add on later on it's not complete complete yet but at the bulk of filming is done last week and then so i'm able to start editing them this week and uh, so my cab uh, my, my computer is now filled with stuff now so uh, it will be able to complete my project and get paid yes how good is that <laughs> and um but you know we'll talk about pay later you know and uh it is hard you know like because i i don't have many uh, uh, job this day and, and, and this this year so oh, everything basically disappear and vanish you know overnight uh, because of the of course coronavirus pandemic and uh, it's really horrible to, to, to say and uh, but don't forget I do have this uh, I do have a there you go that is my coffee link so you can buy me a coffee right there and uh, obviously no obligation and uh, it's a way of supporting me and my work uh, and the channel is and everything as well because uh, it will take me time to do it uh, so I am actually going back to start re uh, doing some proper review video soon or even though it's still in at home environment but I will be able to start doing something I've got a lot of boxes lying around now so I should start doing something before my collaborators will start screaming at me because they're gonna like strangle me like Ugh! Like you're not doing anything, right? And uh, they said, no, because of the virus, I can't go out. I can't film anything. But if you want me to do something creative, I can do it 
on my dining table. Would that be okay? Um, mm, yeah, do something, mate, do something. Okay, I think, I guess that's what I'm gonna do, yeah? I'm gonna do something on my dining table and uh, to see whether they're happy about it. <laughs> um, it. It's weird, you know, like, especially when you're doing content reviews, you know, like, I mean, like gear reviews on, 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 on YouTube. The whole point of my, my philosophy of approaching reviews is I actually use it uh, and show you the end results using those gears. Um, so like at home, I can't really do too much because I'm not going out. I'm not using the gear which I would normally use when I'm going on job. So it, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. So like it's, it's, it's give or take, you know, but I guess you don't want to waste the opportunity. The timing has to be right. And uh, I know a lot of the gear has been sitting around for like almost two months now. And then uh, I, I just can't do anything. You know, the lockdown has really completely imprisoned me in this house and then I can't go out at all. I don't know. Anyway, all this stuff, uh, hopefully will be on ending soon. But remember my coffee link is there. And uh, I, I, yeah, once again, I have to thank a lot of you guys have been supporting me through the buy me coffee thing. And uh, I have received a lot of coffees. And so thank you very much. I truly appreciate it. Uh, but I'm really genuinely, obviously the most important thing is everyone's healthy and, and uh, happy. Uh, I know the lockdown would mean a lot of people that they can't work, uh, losing work just, just like myself. Um, it's gonna be hard and uh, it's gonna be hard for, I don't know how long, uh, but I'm just hoping things will start getting to some kind of normality in weeks to come, if not months. And uh, yeah, we, we shall see. I'm, I'm still hoping that we're still gonna be able to enjoy the summer, but you know, the social distancing may impose, it's still in, uh, still, it's still in place. That means we won't be able to gather in crowds. You know, we still won't be able to see like a lot of friends at, at any one time. We may be able to get one or two. I don't know, I'm not entirely sure. You know, we'll just let the government do the talking and uh, we shall see. But anyway, so uh, thank you again for joining me in the today's update. And then, uh, so we shall see you, uh, not we shall, I shall see you tomorrow. And uh, also tomorrow, remember 3 p.m. Uh, is my YouTube live uh, on my YouTube channel, Red35 Photography. Uh, it's Photography 101, so I'm gonna talk about your horrible experience in, uh, or my horrible experience in photography and filmmaking. So remember to stay tuned, and I want you to share your story as well. So if you want to have uh, share some of your horrible experience uh, in photography, please leave the link down below and uh, let me know about it. I can talk about it when, uh, doing, when we're doing live tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and yeah, stay tuned. You can come and join me live there as well and talk about that as well. So like, yeah, it's gonna have a nice, really cool, fun time together. Let's do that. Until tomorrow, until tomorrow, until, until later. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. And uh, right, anyway, see you later. Bye for now.